He desires your praise, so your hands to him let's raise. You've been waiting on a blessing, but he's waiting on a blessing from you. Let him hear. He desires your praise, so your hands to him let's raise. You know you've been waiting on a blessing, but I will be waiting on a blessing from you. Thank you for joining Trinity Tabernacle, where we teach, preach, and live the gospel. Thank you for joining us tonight for Bible study. We hope and pray that um, the prayers that you have put forth before God, that he has answered them. And if he has not, we pray and hope that you stay faithful, that you believe him, that the prayer of the righteous availeth much. Before we get into the word of God tonight, let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, how we thank you for being God and for allowing us, your children, to be able to call upon you at any time um, for anything. So, Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayer and our request tonight, that you would open up our ears, that we might be able to hear what thus says the Lord, that we'll be able to um, be encouraged, that we'll be able to be reminded of who we are and um, and whom's we are. So, Lord, we love you and we honor you. Let your will be done in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Praise God. So tonight, um, I'm going to read you a lot of scripture. Uh, I'm going to read you a lot of scripture. We're going to start off at uh, 1 Kings. Well, actually, we'll stay in 1 Kings. Chapter 18, verses 19 through 41. So that's a ton of scripture, but I need to be able to tell you the whole story if you're not familiar with the story. So in 1 Kings, I'm reading a King James Version, and you'll find this here recorded. Different Bibles may say different things, but prayerfully they come to the same conclusion. Um, my key verses will be 37, 38, and number 9. But um, 1 Kings verse, 18, verse 19 through 41 says this. Now therefore, send and gather to me of Israel unto Mount Carmel all the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at the Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent his children of Israel and gathered prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long have ye be between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. And the people answered not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, Remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye all the names of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophet of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself, and dress it first. For ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. That's the second time he said that. And they, and they took the bullock, which they had given them, and dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning, even noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for is he a god? Either he is talking or pursuing, or is he on a journey, or pre-adventure he's sleeping. He must be awakened. And they cried aloud, and they cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets, till blood gushed out of them. And it came to pass when the midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, 
that there was neither voice nor any answer nor any that regarded. Verse number 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he, he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, of whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be my name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, which he had made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seeds. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock into pieces, and lay it on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he did so. Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. He said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known that this day that thou art God of Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all the things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that the people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then, verse 38, hmm. then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when the people saw him, they fell on their face and said, the Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there. Verse 41, and Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sign of the abundance of rain. Praise God. Praise God. A lot of scripture, a lot of scripture, but I need you to, to hear, hear the whole story because I want to ask you the question, how confident are you in God? How confident are you in God? God. Um, what I want to bring to your attention is that the word prophet is used throughout this several times, and specifically uh, when when Elijah calls calls them the prophets of Baal and the prophets of that sat around Jezebel's table. But then they also refer to Elijah as the the Lord's prophet. And, and I want to bring you that to, that attention to you because oftentimes people will get caught up on titles. Um, mm -hmm. They'll get caught up on titles thinking that a title yields power, but a title does not necessarily yield power. The power comes from that which the title is given. Yes, um, so, so we're living in times where people are saying, you know, I'm a Christian and I'll do this and I'm a Christian and I'll do that. But your title comes by, by whom you follow, not whom you proclaim. Um, so people, they take, a, they take a title because it's associated with power. So, yeah, they'll be a Christian. They'll be an apostle. There'll be a CEO, there'll be a president, there'll be all of that. But if that's not, that's not followed by an authority figure, then it's just a title. Um, because a racist won't carry a title of a racist because it's negative connotation behind it. A pedophile won't carry the, the title of a pedophile because there's neg negativity tied behind it. But everything that is associated with power, people will do. So don't be um, convinced just because somebody carries a title there should be evidence according to that title that represents who they are proclaimed to be. Yes, so even though we see prophet through here, there was only one true prophet in this, in this word, and that's the prophet Elijah. So what I'm asking you is, how, are, how confident are you in God? That's predicated on how you respond in certain, certain situations or mm -hmm. whenever God calls you to, um, to work. And in this particular text, you know, Elijah is, is a prophet of a certain region. Um, he was called by God, ordered by God, ordained by God, and he hears God's voice and he does what God tells him to do. Elijah is a, is a man, a, a well-renowned prophet. For if you go back and read the beginning of this, when Ahab hears that Elijah is coming, Ahab is afraid because he knows if, if Elijah is coming, God's coming too. Mm -hmm. And Elijah isn't coming for um, conversation, he's coming for correction. So whenever Elijah is coming, 
God is on his way and he's going to re he's going to redistribute either uh, somebody's wealth in a different territory. He's going to change some positions or in this particular case, he's going to rid himself of people um, that cause his people to stumble. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to exercise your spiritual gifts, you have to be confident in your God. You have to be confident in your God for you to even be able to utter uh, your mouth to command, to demand, to rebuke. You have to be confident in God. So confidence comes from a place of security or comfort, a place of, of assurance that um, even if I don't have the natural ability, I'm confident that God called me to it. Therefore, God will assure that I have everything that I need to accomplish this. It's not an arrogance in myself. I'm confident in who my God is and what he has called me to. So therefore, if I'm confident in that, um, the issues that, I, that we naturally struggle in life, as uh, far as having the right resources or being in the right place or knowing the right people, if God truly aligned you or created that for you, the confidence should come that God should supply my needs and not according to what I see, right? That's right. Um, so Elijah, being, in, being here, notice the text that there are over 800 prophets that are here. And Elijah is not concerned about what they can do to him, what they can say or what they can conjure up by their false gods. Because Elijah is confident in his God. He's confident in our God, knowing that God will shelter him, will shield him, will protect him from all dangers, both foreign and domestic. He was confident, he was bold enough to walk into a region that wasn't his homeland and demand that the, uh, the governor of the region call all of the prophets of Baal to this one place. So when we think about what kind of boldness that is, that only comes by relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That you know that God gives you an authority that man cannot denounce, nor has man given you, um, but you walk in this, this, this certain spiritual uh, um, boldness or... Um, What's the word I want to use? Uh, just confidence, knowing that who you stand for is standing with you, right? It's like going, it's like a child going into somewhere with their parents. They're never afraid of what's going to happen because they understand that they're with their parents mm -hmm. and that their parents will always protect them and provide for them and do all of the things uh, for them. So there's this natural confidence that they have or a guarantee that they have that they will be pr protected and provided for by the parents. Elijah has this same confidence in God. You and I, um, the life has dwindled confidence down to us having absolute certainty. There's no faith, right? Mm -hmm. There's no faith. I have to see it to really believe it. Um, I, I won't really answer that call unless I have some proof. Um, I won't really declare it unless, I unless I've seen it done before. Well, that's not, that's not faith, and surely it's not confident. confidence in God. That's relying upon your, your own abilities, your own in inherited traits and qualities to get you where God, God's trying to call you. That's not confidence. So we have to learn that if we are to uh, progress, progress as um, believers, as true believers, then our confidence can't come from where we are. It has to come from whom we are in. And that's in God. So Elijah has this, 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 this stout confidence in who God is and what God demands that he calls 450 of Baal's prophets. 400 of Jezebel, four, no, 400 of Baal's, and 400 of, of Jezebel's, verse 19, and um, just a real Jezebel's table. And they all gather into this place by Mount Carmel for a, um, let's say, a, a battle of the gods, yeah, a battle of the gods. 
And it gives them a simple, simple assignment because we know that throughout the scripture, there's always some kind of sacrifice that occurs. And a burnt offering is another sacrifice unto God so God can smell the fragrance or for an issue that is going throughout the region where they want the blessing of God. They, they will sacrifice some of their um, prime livestock, sheep, or whatever that is, and unto God as a sacrifice. So this isn't an uncommon uh, practice that, that he's asking them to do. Um, but he wants to put them in a place where they feel comfortable that even their own arrogance will be their own demise. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we have to be uh, on guard that, isn't, that it isn't our own arrogance that puts us in a place of demise. Um, because the enemy can set us up to make it seem as we're doing something that we do on a, a regular basis. But we're not glorifying what God called us to do. Um, so he sets them up. You know, he tells them that um, if, 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 if your God, and he's knowing and knowing that their God isn't a real God, but if your God um, is a God, and that he can do this, Baal can burn up or consume these, then we will all call him God. But if my God does, then we all have to call him God. It's an exchange of, of a mentality. You know, he asked them in the beginning, how long are you going to be between two opinions? How long are you going to either trust what Moses recorded and did for his people coming through, uh, through the desert? Or are you going to trust what your, your forefathers did and brought forth these false idols? So you're going to have to choose. You know, the word of God says you can't serve mammon and God at the same time. For you'll love one and you'll hate the other. So he's asking them, how long are you going to stay in this place of ignorance knowing what you know about the one true God. And we can stick a pen right there. Because how many times do we actually often do things knowing that the one true God that we serve would be highly disappointed, would, friend, would, would, would frown, or knowing um, that God didn't call us to do that or to say that or be there, but we will knowingly participate and those things that bring about our own demise. So, so, so Elijah is just asking the same question. You know, how is it that you are continually um, doing something that is going to bring about your own demise? But here's how I'll fix it. We'll, 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 we'll do it like this. If your God does it, then he's God. If my God doesn't, he's God. So they take these simple sacrifices. <clears throat> and he told he gives them some simple instructions about building an altar. So this isn't anything di different, right? Building an altar uh, to you and sacrificing to your God. And he says, "I'll sit, and I'll let you be, and let you do your thing. I won't interrupt you mm -hmm. because I want you to have the full experience of worshiping and calling upon your own God. I'll let you sit down in a place of defeat, and I'll let you uh, mingle there." and have the opportunity to continuously um, bring yourself down to a lower estate. God does us like that. You know, we won't, we won't, we won't. But God says that isn't, that isn't even for you. But I'll let you sit down in that. I'll let you call out. I'll let you cry out. I'll let you do whatever you need to do to prove to you that that isn't what you're supposed to be doing. That isn't your calling, that isn't your God. But I'll let you do it because I have to prove something to you. Mm. I have to prove something to you. So this is one of my favorite scriptures. And it's one of my favorite scriptures too because it shows the power of God, but also because it's a little funny. You know, if anybody wants to be petty, Elijah is being petty. You know, he's, he's mocking them. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 27, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and saying, cry out loud, you know, like, Y'all not loud enough. He can't hear you. Uh, is he asleep? Is he having a conversation with somebody else? Is he on a journey? Is, is he doing other things? So he's, you know, he's actually, he's being really petty at this point, this point in time, knowing that they, they serve a fake God. They serve a fake, they serve a fake God. And they get to the point where they're actually cutting themselves, you know, mm -hmm. trying to prove a point. I'm going to shed blood. I'm shedding blood so that my God knows that I am sincere about um, uh, getting my request unto him. And then Elijah gets to the point where he gets just fed up. You know, time has, time has passed. And so what he does, 
is because he's so confident in God. Not only does he uh, create an altar with the stones, with the 12 stones of Israel, which will represent the 12 tribes um, of Israel, Israel um, same 12 tribes that Jesus references um, that will be in heaven judging the rest of the saints. Um, not only does he do that with stones, um, he also um, takes, the, takes three pitchers of water and he uh, heavily drenches the sacrifice. So he's made it almost impossible if there wasn't a God. He made it impossible for somebody just to throw a match and say that while our God did it, right? He's trying to prove a point that my God is real and there isn't anything that my God can't not do in order to fulfill what God has sent me here to do. That there's nothing that can get, there's, there's nothing too hard, as the word says, too hard for God. Even this God can do. So they, they, they covered up with water one time two times, three times. And then he also filled the trench with water. So you're looking at this, this sacrifice, if you will, that is almost submerged in water. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do, he's going to do the impossible to those that, that are around it. But what I love about Elijah is that Elijah knows that, that God knows Elijah's voice. And that because God knows Elijah's voice, God, Elijah knows that when he cries, God hears because he is confident in who God is. Often with, um, with people is that they're still stuck in so much in the world um, that they don't have a revelation of or knowledge of if God knows who they are, if God knows their voice. Prime example. Mary, the mother of Jesus, when the angel came unto Mary, the angel said, um, calm maiden, the Lord has heard your plea. Essentially saying that God knows who you are. He knows your voice. He knows your cry. He knows your, your murmurs. He knows how you sleep. He knows what your tears feel like, smell like. He knows you from an intimate place. So Elijah is so confident in God because God knows him. It's because of the time that Elijah spends with God. So that goes back to saying, how much time do we spend with God? You can only be confident in something when you, when you constantly know it and spend time in it. That's like with any job, um, in, anything that you do in life, the more you do it, the more comfortable you become, the more confident you become at it, even if you have to do it at the spur of the moment or with different, um, with sicknesses, or a lack of resources, because you're so used to doing it, you can do it in your sleep. Elijah has the same attitude about God. I'm so confident in God because I've spent all this time with God. I've cried to him. I've, uh, I've complained to him. I've worshiped him. I've praised him. I listened, listened. I obeyed him. I walked in his will. I did all these things for God because I wanted to have this relationship with God. It was intentional. So my question is, is it intentional to have a relationship with God or is it intentional to have a, a relationship with the world? There, there has to be a choice. That's between two opinions is what he's talking about. Between two opinions, you have to either have one with God or have this relationship with the world, one or the other. But you can't do the both because there is no benefit in you serving two masters. So, <clears throat> Elijah, after all these... Uh, are um, drenched in water. Uh, Elijah just simply cries out, to the, cries out to the Lord, and um, and the Lord listened to Elijah. Elijah, verse thirty-eight. Then fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and everything was totally gone. But what I like about God is, see, He could have simply made the entire sacrifice just disappear without fire. He could have removed it. Um, he could have had birds or uh, worms come up and consume it. He did what Elijah asked mm -hmm. because of his relationship and his confidence in God. See, we, we struggle with... Um, with our petitions, make your, your petition made, unto, made known unto God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We struggle with that 
uh, because we don't have the beginning, the relationship with mm-hmm. God, so that God does what we ask him for. You know, we want the four before we have the relationship. Mm-hmm. But then you have to have the relationship to get the four or get the request from God. So Elijah had this relationship with God, and God did exactly what Elijah requested him to do because of confidence. So he said that the Lord fell from the fire, the Lord from the, the fire from the Lord fell and consumed not only just the burnt sacrifice, not only just the wood, not only just the stones, but the dust, and he sucked up the water. So now I want you to take those three those those parts, right? The sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the dust, and the water, and make them your enemies. Those are your those are your adversaries. Well, those might be people, they might be emotions, they might be habits, they might be addictions. They might be, it might be fear, it might be all kinds of things, but those are the things that prohibit you um, from walking close to God. Um, but if you learn to just have a, an intimate relationship with him, when you ask, God will supply. When you ask God for direction or for correction, when you ask God for forgiveness, God will consume the, 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 the sin. God will consume the, your, your, your enemy. God will consume uh, or, or relieve you from the habits if you learn just to, 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 to trust and be confident in who God is by the way you have a relationship with. So that's, that's, that's Elijah's um, gift, is that he has, he has this intimate relationship with God. But then there's the beautiful thing about it, is that when, whenever we walk in the, in the, like the thing of, a, of a obedience with God and God begins to demonstrate his faithfulness towards us, um, he'll, he can demonstrate it both in secret, but then he also can do it in the presence of people. The scripture says, and when the people saw it, verse 39, yeah. they all fell on their face. Falling on their face isn't that they fell, just fell down um, unintentionally. This is a, in a place of worship. This is they, they all fell down on their, their face in a place of worship, in a, a position of worshiping and saying or declaring the Lord, he is God. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it, it may sound like it's written funny because it's saying the same thing, the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, mm-hmm. but then saying is God. But what they're saying is that they're one. It's not two different ones, not three different ones. It's not Baal. It's not uh, uh, the, the, the whomever God is over there and the God of the trees and the, that. He said, no, the Lord, the creator, it, the creator, the almighty, I am, he is God. It is one. The Lord, he is God. And that is a testament about how you learn to um, be in agreement uh, with God as you determine or you learn who he is, who he is. So they're walking, <clears throat> and Elijah has requested, and the, and the Lord has consumed all of the um, the sacrifices and all the things that are around it. Um, the people's hearts are beginning to, to, to change, and they're going to, to love on God because that was the, the request, that if your God does it, then we declare he's God, but if my God does it, then he is God. And, but then here's the thing about God is that those that um, a prophet, let's say it like this, a prophet has the same gift of calling as a teacher or a pastor would because they're declaring things of the spirit. They're teaching things of the spirit of God. So the prophet that um misleads of the people of God, there's a consequence for that. Mm-hmm. When you go back to the scripture and look at the New Testament, it describes that the pastor is, has a watch over his congregation's soul. There's a requirement of him to do what's right. If not, there's a reward for that. And I don't mean a, a good reward. It means that mm-hmm. there's a consequence that comes mm-hmm. along with him not doing the, the saints of God right. So that there's a consequence that came from uh, Baal's prophets misleading the children of Israel. And here it is, verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets 
let not one of them escape. So remember, it was 450. Mm -hmm. Take the prophets, let not one of them escape. And he took them to the brook and uh, the brook of Kishon and slew them. That, that's, that's death. So the people, and we'll make this just as if they're your enemies, they're your issues in life, whatever those things are. Um, when you learn to have confidence in God, when you learn to trust God, when you learn to depend on God, when you learn to have a relationship with God, when God begins to prove himself, as the word says, test and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. When God begins to prove himself unto you, those things that came against you or people, uh, God will give them their due reward. So this is why it's important to understand that scripture that when, when the Lord says that vengeance is mine, I shall repay. So you don't have to get back those that have done wrong to you. When God begins to prove that you are his, mm -hmm. then God will begin, uh, he will begin to pray. But the question is, how confident are you in God? How confident are you knowing that God will do exactly what you, um, exactly what he said he would do if you would learn to be or um, to follow what he has said you should be or said you should follow. It's about a relationship. It's about a relationship. And understanding that even, um, even a prophet has issues with um, battling, what's the word? Um, battling depression, battling self-esteem, um, battling relationships. So it's not about Uncertainty. uncertainties. It's not about being perfect. Mm -mm, it's not about that. There was nothing perfect about Elijah except for his ability to follow God. He was still a man. So it's not about perfection, but it's, it's about um, striving to become better. Striving to move from a, a place of darkness to a place of light. So it's not about you walking in perfection as you're going to do everything. You're absolutely not going to do everything right because the, ta the tale of times has a way of tempting and trying people. But it's about you trying to walk in perfection with God. So Elijah knows that and you continue to read the stories about um, the scriptures about Elijah. Elijah is a wonderful prophet, a powerful prophet, and he, he doesn't stop just there. He also picks up um, some help along the way, and Elisha, um, and Elisha carries, continues to carry the mantle for Elijah. Um, but when you have this, this unbreakable bond with God, um, as the scripture says, why you be concerned about what man can do to you when he can just kill the body? Be more concerned about God who can kill the body and the soul. So my, my desire is to trust God, even if that means that I have to go stand in a crowd of 850 people and tell 450 of them you are absolutely wrong in the way you're delivering your message to God's people. And if you don't, I can declare to you what I know God will do and walk off and not even be afraid. That's confidence. I'm not looking back. I'm not going to change my address. I'm not going to stop answering my phone because I know that my God will be my shield, my sword, my buckler. He will be my help, my redeemer. He'll be everything that I need him to be because I'm doing what he had called me to do, even if I have to do it by myself. How confident are you in God? What is it that you haven't done that you lack the confidence that, of believing that God called you to it? What is it that you have left undone um, because you had to do it all by yourself? It's all about just confidence and having a confidence in the right, the right way and not an arrogance in yourself. Praise God. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to look at your word this evening. We ask, oh God, that um, you would remove those things that cause us to uh, put our trust and our faith and our belief 
and uh, things aside from you. We ask that you uh, tear down every single stronghold, that you would uh, remove every single thing that attempts to exalt itself above you and allow us, Father, to boldly declare that you are the Lord, that you are God, that you are the one true God, and aside from you, there is no other. We ask, Father, that you would continue to draw us by your spirit, that you would continue yes, to Lord. teach us, Father, for your word declares that if we would keep your commands, that we are your disciples. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you would um, write your uh, commandments on our hearts so that we would not sin against you, that you would continue to strengthen us and encourage us, and that you would continue to teach us your way. We ask forgiveness of uh, any sin, Father, whether it was our trusting in our own ability, Father, or resources or knowledge, anything, Father, that um, did not exalt you, we ask that yes. you would forgive us, O oh God, and that you would show us the error of our ways. It's in the almighty name of Jesus we pray and we ask it to be so. Bless God. Bless God. So Trinity Tabernacle, we'll see you Sunday. At 11.15, all of you others will find your place of, um, of a worship um, so that you can learn to be more confident in, in the God that you serve and who he sees you as. And I think that's an important thing to say. You have to know that if, if you're confident in God, there is a level of confidence that God has in you. That's why he sent his son. There was a level of confidence that he had in, in me. Praise God. Good evening. Good night. Good night.